Good morning, St. Luke's. In Ephesians chapter 5, verses 19 and 20, which is our Bible passage for today, we read, Speak to one another with psalms, hymns and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. But in order to understand what Paul is getting at here, we need to set them in context by reading the preceding verse, verse 18. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Paul is contrasting two states, those who have had too much to drink, which can often display itself in debauchery and bawdy songs, in contrast to which, Paul says, instead as Christians, as followers of Jesus Christ, allow yourself to be filled by God's Holy Spirit. Allow him to flood into every area of, area of your life and being. And it's worth in passing stopping to note what Paul is implying here. It's not a one-off experience that he's talking about, but rather a continuous day by day in filling. The late John Stott would pray every day, Lord, fill me with your spirit. I love what the 19th century evangelist J.L. Moody said, I'm such a leaky vessel, I need to go on being filled. And one of the hallmarks of being filled with the Holy Spirit is that we will be filled with wonder, love, praise and thankfulness for all that God in his amazing love has done for us and given to us in and through his beloved son Jesus. And one of the ways we can express this is through song. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Every time there has been a great movement of the Spirit in the life of the church, Christian lives have been full of singing. In the early days of the church, they sang psalms, but also made up their own hymns, traces of which, it is thought, might be found in several of Paul's letters, as well as in Revelation. In the 16th century, the Reformers gave us some great hymns, and later great hymns poured forth from the leaders of the Evangelical Revival, John and Charles Wesley, John Newton, to name but three, and right down to today. One is only to think of Timothy Dudley Smith and Graham Kendrick, not to mention all the hymns and spiritual songs just hot off the press. The acid test always being, do they reflect the teaching of Scripture? But just at the moment, other than on our own and in our hearts, it's a little difficult to carry out Paul's injunction here, to speak to one another with psalms, hymns and spiritual songs, for coronavirus has meant that even though we are beginning to be able to worship in church together, even though we can have the organ playing, but not too loudly, so as to need one to raise one's voice in order to be heard, even though the worship band may play, so long as it's not with wind instruments, the one thing we are discouraged from doing together is singing. For why? Because apparently when we speak and sing, we project water droplets, which the virus can then use to spread. But as we wait to sing, let me tell you a true story. In the saga of the Cherokee people, Trail of Tears, the Cherokee nation, trying to keep peace and self-pride reluctantly, agreed to move from North Carolina to the Oklahoma Indian Territory. It really was a trail of tears as they marched because between the sickness and the starvation, half of the Cherokee nation didn't make it alive. Funeral after funeral was held for the young and old alike. And it is one of the sad and grief-filled stories of the injustices against the Native Americans. But there is an interesting side story to this agonising tale. Every single one of the soldiers assigned as guards for this forced march were converted along the way. No one could remain unmoved <coughs> or go untouched by the plight of these people as they resolutely followed and left their homes for another. But that was not what brought about the conversion of these guards. The guards were all converted by a song that the Cherokee people sang over and over again in the midst of their personal and national tragedy. The title of that song contains all the words that there are. It is a simple song with a simple message. What can we do for you, Jesus? What can we do for you? And as we begin to come out of lockdown, isn't that something worth reflecting upon? What 
can we do for you, Jesus? What can we do for you? Let me pray. Lord, as we go into this day, we would simply pray, what can we do for you, Jesus? What can we do for you? Amen.